I'm going to try my second YouTube video with my 49 Ford with the Chevy engine. I'll try to go into some detail as I walk around it. Uh, with nothing else to do as we're more or less quarantined, uh, maybe some of you would like the content. It, I'm no craftsman, I'm afraid. I'm a bit of a farmer fixer guy, and though I try to do things right and safe, uh, I'm sure it doesn't meet with some of the uh, 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 perfectionists among us. But that's okay, I'm happy driving it. And uh, uh, it, there are certainly things that could be changed, should be changed, and can be done differently. As I said, I used a Red Rock uh, adapter kit. The, that fit was perfect uh, for the 229 and I assume for the 4.3 as well. Dimensionally, they're the same, although there are some important internal differences that have to be accommodated. Um, for example, the, the 229 used pretty much all standard small block Chevy stuff, I mean, early stuff. So the flywheel clutch uh, was all the same, and I used a, the short water pump and drives uh, from the earlier uh, small block, which gave me more room up front so I didn't have to run the lower radiator hose underneath the engine or under the front axle. I had enough room there. Uh, it worked out very well. Uh, that's about all I can say about the engine, uh, except to say that that, that 229 is a semi-odd fire, which means the crank journals are split, but not uh, evenly. And so my biggest single problem with this was trying to find the correct distributor and make that uh, fit. Because 4.3s are even fire, meaning the crank journals are split, so it fires trying to think how many degrees, but you know it splits the fire evenly, whereas the 229 is not. Uh, that compares somewhat to the Buick 3.8, which the early ones were a complete odd fire. I mean, they, they, weren't, they weren't close at all. There were some big gaps between uh, firing spacing. So uh, I did finally find the right new Proform distributor, which fit in, and then the next task was trying to get the crank pin uh, spacing matched with the reluctor and actually I found a, re a source on the internet from a, a British source of hot rotting the two the uh, Chevy V6s and that's what helped me but it's in it runs it runs pretty good uh, my original attempt at a carburetor uh, was a used marine uh, carburetor a uh, Holly that I adapted to the dual jet manifold with a stack of adapters that I made, a flat plate to close off the EGR, um, a second adapter, a quadra jet to holly with another plate, <laughs> then the holly four to two, and so I ended up with a holly on top, holly two barrel. However, it was not directly above the, the ports, it was actually back a little bit. So it ran and, and worked fine for my purposes, but I'm sure it wasn't something that would be uh, terribly efficient. I never had any drivability problems with it, other than the carburetor was not right. Um, uh, so I, I replaced it with a used 350, I think, carburetor off of an old international truck. It had a vacuum governor, but in the use I have, you never get into the vacuum governor to even cause it to govern. You just, whatever the throttle is. As you can see, uh, there is a foot throttle. The hand throttle is there, but it's just for decoration. Um, it's a the foot throttle is a Speedway Universal with a cable, and uh, and that worked out just fine. Uh, also, as I showed in my earlier video, you can see the HUP uh, transmission overdrive shifter, and this is an overdrive, uh, regular drive, uh, not a three-speed. So it has a slightly different lever. It's a flat stamped lever, which you don't see very often, but it works fine for me. Now, the other thing that I had to do uh, with the kit because I wanted headers to look like a, a sprint car or something, open headers, uh, I had to accommodate them with some spacing. So I spaced the axles out, and then I dog, put a dog leg in the uh, radius rod to clear. Now initially I didn't have the dog leg on this side. I had spaced out the, the pivot wall on this end. But that was less than satisfactory. I had trouble keeping that tight. So uh, I've since added the dog leg. It seems to work fine. And there is a dog leg on the other side uh, that I built originally. It's a little different style, but 
uh, I did that. That clears the headers and uh, give me sufficient room and it still does pivot. Uh, as far as the front axle, I, I'm not still totally happy with the front wheels. The stance is okay, it's level, but those are 4x12 uh, uh, wheels that were sold as tractor puller wheels. Um, they work, they're fine, and, and the steering is terrific. I have found that the narrow steering works much better, narrow tires, than wide tires. If you see some of my pictures from last year, I had a set of slotted aluminum 14-inch low-profile tires on aluminum wheels with adapters. The adapters spaced the wheels out so far, and then with those wide tires, you ended up, I think, with a lot of nibbling, and 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 it, it would start to shimmy. Um, with the narrow tires that I had previously, the 19s on the original tractor, and then this one, I didn't have any shimmy. Uh, work worked fine. Uh, the battery is mounted uh, behind the uh, behind the step. It's out of the way. Works pretty well there. Um, you have to use a a small uh, compact starter, and that as well works fine. Um, I used the original uh, Chevy clutch on the Chevy flywheel with uh, a 10 inch uh, Ford truck disc that fits the input shaft. Um, the instructions with the red Red Rock kit are clear but rather incomplete. There's much detail that you must figure out yourself as you put the thing together. And and in fact that's part of the fun of the of the whole project is uh, is figuring out how to make it run. But uh, what I found was when I got it together initially I didn't even need to adjust the clutch pedal. Uh, everything was fit so well. Now ultimately I did fine-tune it but Initially, I had clutch, clutch uh, disengagement with no problem. I will say that the Chevy clutch is a bit heavy, especially on parades, and uh, I might consider putting a Ford tractor, the small Ford tractor 8-end clutch on the flywheel, getting it drilled to do that uh, because it would be lighter. And in fact, I'm never going to take this to the field uh, for any work. So clutch, it's just propulsion to, to drive it around. Um, I have used my, my boom pole on this before I built the fuel tank, um, and so it does work. Everything works on it, uh, and it, it really works okay. I did replace the steering box with the later adjustable steering box to solve an initial <laughs> terrible shimmy problem, and, uh, and I've had that in place for three years. It worked fine. Um, I did use a replacement four-core radiator and a cheap, make that inexpensive, 16 inch fan off of eBay bolted right to the frame, uh, screwed right in. It, did, it took no modification at all. As far as electrical system, I use relays for most everything. I have a relay for the fan, I have a relay for the fuel pump, I have a relay, a grounding relay for the starter so that I can keep the, the transmission interlock and so that starter button just grounds the relay which then powers the starter. So. I left that safety in place. Um, I also put a relay in the charging system. Uh, it has a, uh, I guess the, the small Hitachi type um, alternator. It's a mini alternator, quite available on, on eBay. And uh, it worked fine. Um, I, I, I just wanted to isolate that alternator uh, from the system when the tractor is off. I do disconnect the battery terminal whenever I turn it off. Um, Additionally, I put the voltmeter on its own little bracket. Down here, that seemed to be the only place I could find for it. Um, the hole just, it just didn't fit in a hole that was already existing in the panel. So it's, it's, I've still got an empty hole. The fuel system is a two gallon fuel, square fuel cell. And I don't have the, the uh, uh, fuel gauge hooked up, although I could, uh, but it's in place and it feeds through a, a system of valves. I can run it on just the, the tank, the, the two and two gallon. I also built a, a frame to hold the eight gallon cell that's mounted to a Harbor Freight uh, quick hitch. I've used Harbor Freight quick hitches for some other projects as the basis for the hitch connection. Worked okay, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to fabricating. So 
this worked well. Uh, and I do have the Red Rock prop in place to hold it up for drives. Um, I can take it out, raise it up and down, but uh, I use that prop. I used a set of Sanderson uh, tight fit headers, which are really designed for a Jeep swap. Uh, they're not symmetrical. They aren't exactly the same uh, because of the clearance issues in a Jeep, but they look okay. They put the outlet in the right spot, uh, and then I finished them off with a <laughs> another inexpensive eBay part, uh, some motorcycle mufflers. And I apologize, I haven't done any cleaning or shining on this thing since I put it back together uh, this spring. Now, the wheels, I've had several questions about the wheels. These are just a set of core 445 uh, 225 tires that I found on a consignment sale. Only paid $60 for the pair of tires, which was <laughs> much cheaper than I thought. Uh, I have grooved them a little bit. No particular reason other than it makes it look like a, <laughs> maybe a, Maybe a sprint car, I'm not sure, but anyway, they're grooved. Uh, I had flat plates made um, to adapt the wheel to the to the Ford bolt pattern. Now, this was a, a hand-drawn pattern at a machine shop. I wanted to find CAD or, you know, to make the model or laser or plasma computer cut, but I just couldn't find anybody to do it. So. What happened is there are 10 holes cut for the wheel, for the bud, for that big pattern, but I can only get five bolts in. Um, it's just not perfect enough for the wheels, but five fit. And so two of the, the nuts are the sleeve type nut to fill the hole. And that's what centers the wheel and keeps it in place. And the other three are, are just flat washer type uh, retention that holds it on. Uh, when I was in a parade, we had to have a, a display for our, our, our number, and so I did put a couple of local decals on that I run, uh, that I, I use quite often. My local tire store has been very helpful to me in terms of mounting tires uh, and, and other help, and the sandblaster, quality sandblasting out of Fenton, has been a great help as well uh, doing the tin work. I did not have the chassis. Um, sandblasted but in this continuing project that's probably some other year <laughs> to do that actually blasting the chassis and uh, and doing the repaint of the red um, and possibly even the gray because during this winter I'm afraid the the tin work took a little bit of shop wear I'm sorry to say um, that's about all I can say about this if anybody has any questions you can Facebook uh, Find me on Facebook and just PM me, and I can I can give you any help that I can. Uh, I've wanted to do a engine swap project since I was just out of high school. My father had eight ends, and I was working on one in the barn. At the time, I had a 40 Ford pickup with a V8, and the V8 was out so I could replace uh, some of the parts on on the transmission and drive line. And I looked at that bell housing and I thought oh I'll bet that fits a Ford 8 uh, in pattern well of course it doesn't um, and it took me <laughs> 40 plus years to get a swap completed in an 8 in but I do have it and I needed to use an existing kit because I just don't have the the skill or tools to make the correct adapters and so the Red Rock kit just worked so well for me um, I, I guess I don't really have anything else I did put some permanent tie downs on. These are forged ends through the through the axle with clevises that keeps a little of the uh, chain rash off the paint job, even though my paint job isn't that good. Um, I hope you find this this interesting. It's configured for my tractor drives. Uh, it easily keeps up in the drives. Uh, I did use a set of reproduction fenders on it, just because I was in a hurry and didn't want to spend the time uh, on my other fenders so it is what it is and uh, again I, it, when I take it to the car show uh, here in town I get just tons of people asking about it you know some recognize the engine some recognize the tractor uh, grandpa had one uh, and I'm sorry to show you <clears throat> all the uh, messy garage um, I will go over here and show my next project which will show up on the the Jacobson site 
but it's a Jacobson golf course tractor. It already goes 50 miles an hour, um, so I won't worry about having to do an engine swap on that one. Um, and I also have, oh, four or five more eight ends in, a, in storage um, that are needing various things. So uh, more content and probably too long of content, but I know people have questions and with nothing else to do as we're locked down, some of us, uh, you may enjoy it. So enjoy it. Uh, PM me if you need, if you want some help or advice, uh, I'll be happy to do it. Uh, and believe me, you can do this and complete an installation in far different ways than I have. Um, this suits me. So if you're going to do a swap, suit yourself and have a ball. Thanks.